Alrighty, so this is Magnara engine. So if you haven't been following the build on L67 Talk since 2019 when I started this, um, uh, you won't be familiar, but I'll go through and show you everything that's in this motor um, because it's going to be shoved back in there eventually. Just got to give it a clean because there's nothing really to do on the actual motor side of things. It's just swapping it and making sure all the fittings for this, for the intercooler and all that, that fuel system fits in that. So what is this motor? This is a 3.8 litre, yes, it's still a 3.8 litre displacement. Uh, supercharged V6, um, L67. It is currently running a 2.4 litre Whipple supercharger. Whipple uh, 145, well, 140 or 145AX, um, accompanied with this enlarged U-bend here at the back, done by Centerline Industries. Um, Damo's done an amazing job doing the welding on that, and that's heat wrapped. So it's got a 102 throttle body that's cable driven. Uh, using the LS cable, um, we can pull it from the rear, getting more control. Um, Obviously, this is going and going to get replaced with drive-by wire and give us more control. And over here, there will be, this is a, what we call a, um, a, ho, a bypass line. So it will come out down and connect back into the intercooler piping here with a bypass valve. And that will allow the air when we're idling and not spinning the rotors to go down around through here and just go straight into the motor, bypassing the charger and the intercooler. Once it's compressed, uh, this is a 67mm uh, pulley, uh, so it's about 20, 22, 23 psi we, um, in this motor with the um, all the piping. So it gets pushed out through the charger and through this uh, adapter plate to mount to the uh, M90 footprint. Gets pushed out, comes out down here, this has been ported out and enlarged. To through a uh, Wigan style clamp. We'll come out down and go into the intercooler that sits out the front here. Apologies, the intercooler is currently still in storage, but this is it here. It will come in from one end through two massive watered air cores and then back out again. Now, this intercooler has been modified. It actually has technically four different cores in here because there's four inlets underneath. Water comes through. Four, inlet, four outlets on top, and that's to allow cool air, cool water to go through the whole unit at once. Therefore, as the air comes through, it's hot, it heats up the first one, but then it's colder here, and it's colder here, and it's colder here. And by the time it comes out, it's we the best temperature we saw was uh, I think it was like 58 degrees on a dyno at like 26 pounds of boost. And then it would come back in through the back here, which has been modified to suit and around and then back into the motor. Take this off. All right, let's top end off. Um, here we go. Here is the lower intake manifold. It's actually not too bad at the moment. Um, it will come in and get dispersed. So this has been bored out as much as I can to fit the footprint of the uh, air to air plate. But um, would be when I upgrade the charger in the future, there'll be some more work done to this thing. So uh, VS fuel rails modified to suit. So just using some, some bent up sta stainless plate. Uh, and some bolts um, that all fits in fine modified and welded on AM fittings to, to suit still retains factory cooling pipe and everything going around the back um, don't know even why that's still there I might just chuck in the bin it's been sitting there for years and years um, polished ZCP rocker covers and that is protecting the rockers that are underneath so the rocker covers coming off we gotta show you what's underneath. 
Not too bad, pretty clean under there. So we have a set of Yellow Terra 1.6 to 1 ratio rockers. So it's only 1.6 to 1 because the cam itself gives me uh, quite a big enough lift. So we can't really push it because with that ratio, I think I'm already hitting a 600 and 605 lift because it's a uh, intense stage four cam. Um, so I'll put the specs up in there and show you guys. And I'm running a dual valve spring setup there. So it equates to around about 150 pounds of pressure. The injectors I run are a Bosch um, 980cc or 1000cc, what, uh, whatever you want to call it. So they're different cc's, different pressure. But um, they're great because the, um, the atomization they do um, at a free bar is perfect. So moving on to the heads. Um, so these heads have been slightly uh, slightly ported, but as you can see, the the uh, still a bit of material there to um, to work with. So maybe in the future I'll get these pushed out, or if someone's got a set of alley heads, um, I won't say no because that will then finish the top end off of this project and um, yeah let me know these aren't the factory head stud, stud size anymore so we've upgraded for, to a half inch head stud so the block has actually been drilled and re-tapped with, with that sizing so that will allow uh, much better clamp force I believe when you tighten these are now up to 115 foot pounds of torque I can't remember the number, but I think that's around about that. Um, and that's because I don't run a multi-lever head gasket. Oh, it's pissing on me. Um, a multi-layer head gasket anymore. Uh, one massive sheet of copper. And this block has been decked, um, machined, and fire-ringed um, to suit. Cooling is done by a Mazia electric water pump. So that pumps it around. And down here, I have a girdle to support the main bearings and um, and the bottom end. So some of the other stuff I can't show you, but it's in there is the uh, internal parts of the bottom end. So I'll write it up on the screen right now. I'm currently running a set of oversized uh, 3.82 um, JE forged pistons. Um, I believe believe they uh, are running Haston rings. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, spool spool conrods. Um, every bolt in this bottom in this bottom end is being changed over to an AR ARP ver version of it. Uh, the bearings in this are ACL race bearings. Um, pretty much the crank has been indexed, checked over, made sure. Um, like the only thing that's still factory from this original motor is the crank and the block and the heads, well the head outside. Um, everything else has been changed over. So that's pretty much it guys. Um, I can't really think off the top of my head. Um, it's been a while since I actually did anything to the bottom end of this. Um, but shoot me a comment if you want to ask a question, more questions about it. Um, the only thing I can really say is um, I have drive balancer and double row timing chain. That's the only other things I can think of the top of my head. But probably asking why, well, what are you doing while the engine's out? Um, not a lot. Just a bit of service and maintenance and cleaning because um, it's got schmutz everywhere. Um, most of it would have been because whilst the uh, heads were sealing, because you've got to re torque copper head gaskets a couple of times before they finally seal. And I've got to retorque them again. So whilst these are all off, I have to click them down and make sure they're all still good. Um, because once that's done, um, and I've finished doing stuff in the engine bay, then that, along with the T56, which is in the corner over there, can get put in. That's a big supercharger. Like, there's my phone. I'm a, and I'm a size 12 foot, but and, and I want to go bigger again eventually.
Spark plugs I run in this is a Brisk GOR14LGS, so a little bit cooler than, than stock. And then that's the pattern that looks like in the bottom. So I run that, they were, they've been working very, very well for me. And to run those uh, spark plugs you require some big ass coils to run them. So uh, IGM1A coils, um, they give quite a big of a punch and you need that uh, under high boost pressure because those plugs are gapped to 2.3 millimeters. I highly doubt this knock sensor was doing anything, um, but I was running on E85, so highly didn't doubt it detected any knock. So, uh, whilst the motor's also out, removing the factory knock sensors because they're shite, and I'm going to be replacing them with some uh, Bosch uh, knock sensors. Alrighty, so just doing the old, getting the old oil at the moment. It's actually quite, um, it is quite a cold day, so it's quite thick, but got myself a little sample here. It's actually uh, not too bad of colour, but um, I think it should have been changed a little bit earlier. So, so I'm putting some fresh stuff in it now, but there's no bad contaminants, there's no particles that I can see, so we're all good. Uh, top of oil I run, Castrol Edge 10860. Um, Worked really well for me, had no issues ever since I started using it for over 10 years ago, so... Good. Good. Oh, I don't think 10, probably about 7. Alrighty, Sean. I'm gonna start my fire. I'm gonna get to 110 foot pounds, which is a, a bit on these, uh, mo uh, these motors, I think. 90 foot pounds is the, uh, is the standard head bolt. So a slide upgrade? Slide upgrade. You've got a slide upgrade on power though. Apparently it's, um, according to ARP uh, website, it um, gives you 200,000 psi pressure. Right, there's, a, there's 110. Yeah. Alright, so um, go from the inside and just rotate around like a clock. Quite, uh, quite dark in colour, bit of lime and we'll be good, bit of lemonade as well. Bit of 10 weight 60, how are ya? <laughs>